as some of you know, I'm back in my old site. I spent 16 years at McMaster University building the School of Medicine and helping build the Department of Psychiatry. You got those? That's right. And so, a few brief notes. I checked through my records since I was then the Vice President of Health Sciences and Data Medicine. And psychiatry said I should, that Dan offered to have a post here. I recruited him. Now, why did I recruit him? Because he was one of the psychiatrists who was not only interested in diagnosis and treatment, but he was interesting, interested in what really caused it. And he thought there was something in early childhood. I said, my God, this is an enlightened psychiatrist. I apologize, Peter, for all you and all your colleagues, but he was a godsend. Now, next. Can you change that? Offered's influence, and that's kind of strange. Anyhow, how'd that get in there? Um, you've gone too far forward. Go back. Alfredo works with me. Well, don't worry about that. I will just go ahead and talk. Offered's interest clearly were trying to get at the underlying factors that caused mental health problems. And so we'd started the Canadian Institute for Advanced Research. And we did population health. Michael Marmot worked with that group. Uh, that indeed led to a conclusion there was something that happened early on in life that influenced risk for physical and mental health problems. And that group, which Clyde Hertzman was part of, I said, well, if this is true for health, it must be true for learning and education. That led to our second attempt to create a program in human development. That was the toughest one to do because getting people from education, medical science, and epidemiology to talk to each other, as Clyde will remember, we took a little while before we managed to bridge across all those intellectual problems. But Dan Offord was on that second group and he was a powerful contributor to it. We then chugged along and they tried to do a few things and we came up against Clara Will, uh, who was in North York and with the school board up there, which Jim Grieve was associated with, as I recall, Jim. And she started to get the community to come together to try to do something about this and get the school board on side, et cetera, et cetera. I won't go through all the details of that. But then I had left my job running the Institute for Advanced Research and put into the Founders Network to keep me out of the way. And um, Mr. Harris, who was the Premier of Ontario, decided he wanted an early year study. So we set up a task group to do that, which included Margaret McCain, and included Robin Williams, who I hope is here, and included Dan Offord and Clara Will. And that document was a landmark document for this part of the world because it put developmental neurobiology and the epidemiological results out in spades. The thing that came from that was that Dan said to us, too bad we don't have some kind of measurement tool that will let us know how well we're doing. So that led to the recruitment of Magdalena, who was a little frustrated, I hate to use that term, Magdalena, but she trained under Hind at Cambridge, who's a primatologist, and she was in the Department of Psychiatry at the Sick Children's Hospital, which did, dealt with diagnosis and treatment, but what not, she had not been trained in. I said, look, I've got a place for you to go. Name's Dan Offord. He would like to work in the area that you like to want to work in, and I've got a bit of money to fund you until people like Charles Pascal, et cetera, can come in and back you. So that's her history, how she got here, and she worked with Dan to develop that outcome measure. Now, the EDI measurement is not a psychosocial measurement. It's just a crude marker, as Clyde knows, of neurobiology of brain development, because you pick it up by certain characteristics. And the key thing was to find out if it would do a few things. So that led to several things. First of all, the government of Ontario decided that this was a good idea and gave McMaster University money to fund a chair for a person like Magdalene. Isn't that right, Peter? So that's how she got here and got started. We then had a meeting of the Early Years Action Group. I don't know if you're following me or not. 
And uh, the players at that meeting include a lot of the people who are here. Uh, it includes Charles Pascal, Dan Offord, and other people. See how this was going on. So what they did is they had decided to, this is the early year action group, name of people. They decided that they would look at the EDI in North York. And so this was the first community-based application of this measurement tool to which we have huge credit to Jim Grieve because he managed to persuade all the kindergarten teachers to take part in it. I think there were 600 of them at the meeting you dragged me to to see if they would help us to do it. And so that was the birth of EDI in a sense in that, in that district. Then Clyde uh, did with his people a very brilliant thing and this is the EDI outcome measure and performance in the school system. And what you have in the middle column is the percent passing their grade four test. And those with no EDI disability, EDI disability is the bottom 10% in the measurement. Um, zero disability, and most of them pass, it's the 13%, but look at the group that have four to five, huge chunk of them fail. And this perfectly shows that the quality of early development affects your performance in the school system. It's interesting that when we speak to the educators across this country on this subject, the teachers will give you a standing ovation because they know this. It's the institutional structures which are barriers to moving the agenda forward. They're frustrated by it, which is an interesting point. And the right-hand side of that slide shows you that kids don't come to school to do tests if they're not gonna do well. So if you look at the people failing to pass on grade four, if you put together both the test results for the school and then those that don't turn up, it's a massive difference. And that shows you in spades how this is a very important part of the whole business. Next. So, these are the rascals. Uh, Offered offer and influenced Pascal. I think you'll agree with that, Charles. Clara Will, who did that good job for us in North York. Jim Grieve was brought in early because he was one of the few educators that said, hey, this may be smart in terms of how education will work. Right, Jim? He dragged me down to speak to 10, 20, 30 heads of school boards. And one of them was a bit slow. I won't say where he came from. It was a male, it wasn't a female. And um, that was good fun with that. And then, of course, there's Magdalena Janis, who comes into this whole story. So to me, this is a historic occasion. It represents the extraordinary capability that Dan Offord had, which Charles has referred to, giving a contribution that I think is very valuable to our country and hopefully outside, because some of you outside are using the technique, and recognition of what Magdalena has done uh, coming into the McMaster structure with the support of the Offord Center and other groups to what she has done. I personally think, Sir Michael, that if you don't have data, you can't identify problems. The EDI really to fit Alfredo, our friend from Uruguay. This provides the data to say where the problem is. The only problem is, Magdalena, everybody knows that we need to have a measure that we can work at, at an earlier age, but you can talk about that in the research session on, uh, on Friday morning. So, I'm finished. No, I'm finished. I think I've said all I need to say. This, to me, is a very pleasant session, and I've tried to go through the range of people that have been touched by Dan Offord in the development of this, which is really very much to the credit of McMaster and the people in the, in the Offord Center to put it all together. So thank you very much.